tear down the idols we were on revival it's hidden right there and what we're singing right now jesus you alone are worthy and no one else deserves the glory i believe that this generation that the people that you in this room you're hungry to give jesus a worship and praise that he deserves that he is worthy of oh that the clean hands that the pure hearts he's marking you in this room with that so jesus we say tonight that you are worthy of the praise you are worthy of the worship of our hearts laid before you. Oh, come on, sing Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you alone are and no one, and no one else deserves the glory, Jesus. Jesus, you You 
Let's fill this room with the fragrance of worship. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing, you are worthy. You are worthy. sing day and night oh and day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense oh we say in our worship, he's present in our praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. Can you just begin to worship him in a new way? It's deeper now. Yeah, yeah, begin to sing your own song. It doesn't have to be fancy. <laughs> it doesn't have to be eloquent. Sing it in your own language. Sing 
feel his presence right now, just thank him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Increase among us, Jesus. Increase your presence among us, Lord. We love you.
Cause now I see you on your throne Clothed in white with eyes of fire My beloved, the holy God I stand in awe, filled with wonder oh. Oh, oh, my Jesus, we see you as you are My Jesus and I exalt thee and I want you to think about your life where you're at what circumstances you're facing there's something so powerful about exalting Jesus in the face of impossible situations whether that's what you're going through in your family in your job at your university in your personal life there's something something so unique on this side of eternity that in the face of impossibility we can lift Jesus up and say I exalt you over my depression I exalt you over my anxiety. I exalt you over my campus. I exalt you over my family, over my lost friends. I exalt you. So I want Olivia to lead, lead us in this again. And I want you to engage this with your heart, with those things you're facing. Let's begin to exalt Jesus. Let's lift him up high over whatever we're facing. Come on. Oh, Lord, let's lift him up tonight. And I. On over your impossibilities. I Lift up King Jesus, thee. the only one who can move that mountain. I
lift King Jesus up. The lover of our souls, we lift you up, Jesus.
shout to Jesus tonight. We love you, Jesus. Come on, a little louder. You can give him some, give him some praise. Bless his name tonight. We love you, Jesus. All glory to you, Jesus. Come on. Amen, amen. Give somebody a high five. Meet somebody new. You can find your seats. We're going to transition tonight. Tell somebody Jesus loves them. Give them a word of encouragement. All right, all right. If you want to find your seats, we're going to get transitioned tonight into the message. All right, we do it every week. As you're going to your seats, can you raise your hand high if this is your first Monday night, your first time with us? Raise your hand high. Come on, can we welcome our new friends? So glad you're here. So pumped that you would join us on these Monday nights. We're the Circuit Riders. My name's Zach, and these Monday nights for us, can I tell you where these nights started? You guys, most of you guys maybe know, some of you don't. These nights started in a garage. Everybody say garage. These nights started in a garage with about 20 of us, with Brian and Christy Brent, and they've turned into these worship nights where people are driving. Did anybody drive over two hours to get here tonight? I see some hands back there, hand over here. Anybody drive over three hours to get here? Whoa, let's go. We got some, no, you liar. I see you over there. You drove over three hours? Man, can we make some noise over three hours to come worship Jesus together? So we're so blessed that you guys would come spend these nights with us. They're so fun. We love going after Jesus. We got a couple of announcements. We're going to jump in. Can we get the first slide up for our announcements tonight? Greenhouse. So we have our prayer room. Everybody say prayer room. So it's called the greenhouse. It happens in this room every Thursday night. At 6.30, so this Thursday, 6.30, we'll have two hours of prayer and worship happening in this room. You can come, be a part of it, bring your friends, it's awesome. We'll kick in more hours as we get into the fall. We'll have multiple days, so we'll more details to come on that. But come join us um, for Greenhouse this Thursday night, 6.30. Amen. Can I get the next slide? Everybody say see our experience. So here's the deal. We run two major, major, main training schools, um, and they are major, two training schools a year that are six months long. One starts in October, one starts in January. And so we have uh, our January, our October school's already hit its deadline. So unless you're just dead set on coming, you can join. But we've got our January applications open. So here's the deal. You get trained for three months here in Huntington Beach, trained, equipped, uh, in your own skill sets and the communication of the gospel, trained to be a missionary. And then for three months, we hit the road all over America, in the nations of the earth, holding uh, gospel events, reaching the lost, catalyzing young people to reach their generation. It's the most life-changing six months, I promise you. So here's the deal. If you've ever felt that, like, tug in your heart, like, man, I would love to give a season of my life to getting trained, going deeper in the scriptures, going deeper to become a missionary, whether that's to the marketplace later on, to another nation, to a university, to a high school, come get trained. Come do it with us. You can apply online. Come find me afterwards. Love to give you more information about the CR experience. Sound good? All right, one more slide. The send. Everybody say the send. Man, it's, I don't see Chase over there. Is Chase still in the room? Chase, come here real fast. Everybody welcome Chase up real quick. I want, I want Chase. Now, you got you to gotta make it like two minutes, so it's hard. But we just had the send in Grand, in, no, in Pennsylvania, one coming up in Grand Rapids. So Chase was there, so I wanted to give you a little soundbite of what happened and what we're believing for with the send because as circuit riders, this is part of our movement. So if you're part of the Circuit Rider family, the sin, you're now part of the sin family and the sin storyline. So can you give us like two minutes, just shred us with what happened this past weekend? Got you, Z. Man, you guys are looking good, sounding good tonight. You guys having fun? Okay, so two minutes on the sin. We had our first of four arena gatherings in Reading, Pennsylvania. 
two days ago, and there was about 5,000 primarily young people gathering in Santander Arena, worshiping Jesus, praying, going after his heart for 10 hours from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Clear gospel call. Hundreds are giving their life to Christ, coming to the altar. Um, there was a missions call from Andy where literally we had um, over 600 young people say that they wanted to give a portion of their life to the mission field. That's crazy. There was, there was over 100 and something high schoolers saying they wanted to join together to plant Jesus clubs on their high school in that region. There was a segment for vulnerable children. There was over 500 people that said, I'm willing to help families that are in foster care. I want to support and encourage them. And then there was hundreds, of, there was over 100 other people that said, I want to foster or adopt one day. It was a day, and then at the end of the day, there was miracles, signs and wonders breaking out. I'm telling you, it was so encouraging. It's like this room. I just feel like the spirit of this room was filling that arena for 10 hours. I'm telling you, revival was breaking out in central Pennsylvania. I think we're going to hear about the fruit of it for a long time. So there's three more coming if you want to go to one. Grand Rapids, September 2nd, Boston, September 16th, or fly on to Nashville, February 3rd next year. We're excited. It was awesome. Back to you, Z. So good. If you've noticed, right, we're, we believe in activation. So, like, we've never really, like, you guys always say, like, repeat this after me. We, get, we love people getting activated, not just because it makes us feel better, but because we believe that when people encounter Jesus, it activates them into mission. And so the send is all about mobilizing young people into their mission field. And so it's going to be amazing. Go, go check one out. Um, all right, that's all the announcements. And so tonight, we got a special night tonight. We have one of our senior leaders of Circuit Rider bringing the message tonight. And so, yeah, you can, Jackson, you can go ahead and bring up the, the table. We can give it up for Jackson. Let's go. So Matt Nelson is going to bring the word tonight. Just a little, I just want you to kind of have a little understanding of who Matt is. So Brian and Christy, the founder of Circuit Riders, um, yeah, oh, oh, if, you know, if you, who've listened to Brian on a podcast, seen a video, heard a sermon, laughed your way into freedom. So if you haven't, Brian and Christy are the founders of Circuit Riders, and they experienced a, a real outpouring of the spirit and revival in Washington before Circuit Riders was ever born. Matt, who's speaking tonight, him and his wife have, were with Brian and Christy before Circuit Riders ever started. We're here at the birth of Circuit Riders and have carried the movement in their hearts. They're amazing. Matt is a practitioner. So Matt, tonight, what you're going to get is you're not just going to get a message. You're going to get marching orders. You're going to get activated to actually do something, to believe for something, to move into something. So I want to encourage you, you got to lean in tonight. I know we lean in every week, but there's, there's an impartation for you tonight. If you'll receive, if you'll lean forward and take hold, I believe that by the Spirit, what Matt has for us is something that will change the trajectory of your life. I know that's a bold statement. But there are moments when the Lord gets a hold of us, and if we will truly believe and reach out for it, the Holy Spirit can do phenomenal things with a little bit of a reach. So are you guys down to lean in tonight? Are you guys over here down? Are you guys ready? Matt, are you ready? Come on, Matt. Can we welcome Matt up tonight? How's everybody doing tonight? All right, come on. I think we can do better than that. Are you guys doing okay tonight? Awesome. I'm so pumped to be with you. Thank you, Zach. It was an amazing worship team. That was incredible. Uh, we're going to jump right in. Does that sound good? If you've got a Bible, I want you to grab it. If you don't, open up if you've got um, a Bible app on your phone. We're going to dive into Scripture tonight. And I want you, I love what Zach said, I want to invite you into our storyline a little bit tonight, but I believe uh, it's your storyline as well. That's why I want to invite you into it. So we're going to take some time on the front end and really dive into the Bible. How many of you love the Bible? Yeah, come on, awesome. So if you want to take notes, you can. If you've got a, a super memory, then bless God, lay hands on me. But uh, we're going to dive into the Word. I'm going to pray real quick. And then we'll jump in. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that your presence is here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you're doing in our hearts already. I ask you to open the word of God to us tonight. 
and speak to us. I pray that there would be truth encounters tonight, power encounters tonight. I pray that there would be healing tonight, breakthrough in Jesus' name. I pray that anyone who's come in under warfare in their life, that there would be a supernatural lifting of that warfare. There would be clarity on their life and a forward movement in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, awesome. So I want to uh, start tonight with this. So the title of my message is Possessing the Promises of God. Possessing the Promises of God. Tonight we are going to go after practically how do you pursue and take hold of the promises of God in your life. I want everyone here to know that your life is filled with promise. Some of you know that, but I think it's possible that some of you have come in the room and you have never considered before that you have tremendous purpose on this earth. You have purpose far beyond anything you've ever considered. I really think that for many of us, for all of us, if God showed us the fullness of his purpose for our life, we would, like right now, we'd probably just pass out and fall over, right? Because God is so good. How many of you know the Bible says God can do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine? And I found in my life often when I thought about my future, I was thinking about what God could do through the framework of my understanding. But I want you to know that God is not limited to your understanding when it comes to your future and your purpose on this earth. Amen? How many of you know God is operating on a totally different level when it comes to your future? So tonight is really about how do we enter into this? I want to say that Monday nights, and I know that you know this, but if it's your first time or if you've been coming for a long time, Circuit Riders is really a family. So this, these are circuit rider family nights, and I want to take the moment to say we're inviting you into that. If it's your first night, welcome to the circuit rider family. You are part of the family now. So there's no warm-up period. There's no secret handshake. If you do have a secret handshake, maybe don't share it with anybody, right? This is just about joining the family in faith. And over the last year, as part of our storyline, God has been speaking this phrase to us as a circuit rider community and as a circuit rider mission was that this was a season to cross over, that God was going to lead us in crossing over. Everyone say, it's time to cross over. And I really believe that we're in a season on the earth individually and corporately that God is leading us into crossing over into the promises of God in all kinds of ways. And I want to invite you into that. If it's your first time that you've ever heard that, I'm going to explain it in a minute. We're going to dive into scriptures and explain what that means. But I want to start by just saying that is a word to you. I really believe that the invitation to cross over into the promises of God is a now word for everyone in the room. If you've never thought about it before, you don't need to earn it. You don't need to warm up to it. God's promises come by grace, and God is saying to you tonight, it's time to cross over. Everyone say cross over. If you're part of the circuit rider community and you have been for a decade and you've been contending for the promises of God for a long time, I think God is saying to you, tonight it's a time to cross over. I think there are some of you in the room who've maybe been following God for a lot of years. You've been contending for a revival in our generation. You maybe have decades under your belt, but yet you have unfulfilled promises. And I believe God is saying to you, it is time to cross over. Everyone say cross over. How many of you want to cross over into the fullness of what God has for you? So tonight is really about practically how do we do that? Because so often I think it's easy to be inspired to cross over. But if you're anything like me, I get inspired and then I go home and I go, I'm so pumped up right now to cross over. What does that mean now? And so I want to sort of take that next step because I feel there's so much hunger in the room. I don't feel the need to pump you up to want to cross over because I know you do. What I want to do is go to the next step and go, then how do we practically cross over? Obviously, crossing over is borrowing from the story of Joshua. How many of you are familiar with the story of Joshua? So grab your Bible, and I want you to turn to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to set the backdrop a little bit for us here. And then we're going to read some scriptures. I've got a bunch of scriptures tonight. So if I start going fast, you can just write down the addresses and go back and read them later. But I just felt it was so important for us to be tied into the word of God. Okay, so when we pick it up in Joshua chapter 1, that's where we're going to start in just a moment. I'm going to read some verses. But just a quick backdrop. Many of you know the story, but if you do not know the story, what brings us to this moment? So you have the nation of Israel, right, existing in Egypt 
for many, many years under the bondage of slavery and the oppression of that Egyptian situation there, right? We're tracking with that. And we understand, and maybe you've never heard this before, but if you've not heard this, I want to just give you a little bit of understanding that that is part of the narrative of God's people, and it brings them through. But it also represents, it's what's called a type and shadow. It represents something for the New Testament believer. It's not just a story for you to look back on and to be inspired by, though it is that. It also represents something for the modern-day person. And being in Egypt literally represents being lost and without God. It literally represents the person who is not in Christ. And therefore, the Bible tells us when you're not in Christ, you literally are a slave to the enemy. You have no power to resist him. We belong to him. So this Old Testament picture of the Israelites being in Egypt is a picture of a modern-day person who's living without Jesus Christ. Their life is completely dominated by the enemy. And the people cry out to God, and God says, I'm hearing the cries of my people. Do you guys remember this in the story? And so he finds a man named Moses. Everyone say Moses. Moses. Right? And he activates Moses, and he goes, you're going to go, and you're going to turn my people free. You're going to lead them into freedom. I know you know the story. I'm just setting the stage. This will have value for you, I promise, or we can miss some of the exciting things when we get to Joshua in just a moment. So stay with me. So Moses goes and does that, right? And we love the famous story of when they cross the Red Sea, right? You guys remember God parts the water. And that's an incredible, and there's so much. We could preach that for hours, and it's incredible. What is that a a picture of, though? It's a picture of salvation. God parts the waters and births us supernaturally into the kingdom, and we become God's children. And we are delivered from the power and the oppression of the enemy, and now we are set free from that bondage. And so that crossing over of the Red Sea is a picture of salvation. Everyone say salvation. And God's design, God's purpose was to lead them straight into where? The promised land, right? We know the Bible calls the promised land the land of Canaan was the name of it. That was God's design. But you guys know in the story, remember that original generation of Israel got lost in the desert because of the sin in their heart and they began to wander for 40 years. Are we all tracking on this so far? So you've got this wandering phase. Okay, now, if you don't know where I'm going, I'm giving you some pictures of how that applies to us. What is that a picture of? That's a picture of believers who have a sincere relationship with God, yet they've not entered into the full promises of God over their life. They're still living in the bondage of yesterday, yet they're in the kingdom. Does that make sense? And we've got so many believers who are part of the kingdom, yet they've not entered into the promises of God, and they're living in this in-between space where they're tormented by why they know is true and yet they're not living in the reality of that truth. And you may or may not know this, but I think some of you in the room, maybe you know what that feels like. You have this longing for God. You have a desire for God. You have a relation, maybe the seeds of a relationship with God. You have a genuine faith, and yet there's so many parts of your life that still look like yesterday, and yet you know there's this tomorrow that God's calling you to, but you don't feel able to break through into that tomorrow. Be bold right now. Raise your hand if you can identify with feeling like there's a longing for more in Jesus, but you're struggling to be set free or to break through into the fullness of what your heart is longing for. Raise your hand if you can identify with that tension. Raise it really high. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So that's what we're breaking through tonight. So when God comes and he says, it's time to cross over, what is he saying? What he's saying is it's time to leave that part of your life and to come into the fullness of God's promises for you. And one of the things I want to say to set this up is that when God brings you into fullness, God is not into partial fulfillment. Jesus Christ died and rose again to purchase fullness or full fulfillment for you. So if you feel tonight, I'm passionate. Why am I passionate? I'm calling you into fullness. I'm saying, let's not be content with a little bit of promise here. Let's not be content with feeling a little bit better here. But I want to invite us tonight into contending for the fullness of what Jesus Christ died and rose again to purchase for you. So that brings us to this story. Here we go, Joshua chapter 1. And uh, these are the instructions. Moses is not going to enter into the promised land. God's raising up a Joshua. This is really significant for you tonight. So I want to read this. This is God's instructions to Joshua chapter 1. Verse 1, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' Moses is aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I am about to give them 
to the Israelites. Pause, I want you to look up here. The Lord is saying to Joshua in this moment, get ready, it's time to cross over. I'm about to give the land to the people that I promised them. I wanna make this point, I'm gonna read on in a second, but there are moments in life when the Lord says, now's the time. There are moments in life when the Lord says, now's the time. When the Lord goes, look, we've been wondering, but it's time to fulfill the promises. There are times when God says, I'm urgent, and the Lord is urgent, I believe, for our generation. I believe that God is urgent for you. And I believe that God is saying on the earth right now, it's time to move forward. How many of you resonate with that? You feel in your faith, in your heart, there's an urgency to the hour for your generation. And you're feeling like it's time. We cannot go on like this. There has to be a breakthrough. How many of you resonate with that urgency? I believe that urgency is in the air because God is saying it's time. Verse 3, he says, I will give you... Every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Does that sound familiar to anybody? to a promise that Jesus makes to us. God's promising his presence. Verse six, this is his command to Joshua. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Here's my belief, and I believe it's a word for you tonight. Every one of you in this room is a Joshua. Every single one of you is called. Did you guys hear what I just said? I was like three people. Every one of you is a Joshua. You are called to lead your generation into the promises of God for your generation. And I love this line right here. So often when it comes to the promises of God, I don't know if you can relate to this, but me, I know that I do. I get so individually focused on the promises of God. Like whenever I bring up promises of God, it's always I think we think in an individualistic manner. Like I have promises. And I want you to know you have tremendous promises. You have incredible promises. But I think some of the greatest promises of God are so much bigger than our individual lives. They're corporate promises. And I'm going to show you this in Scripture in a moment. But I want you to know that there are individual promises in God. There are corporate promises, meaning God takes you with a company of people into something he's doing as a group. And there are generational promises. What does that mean? Generational promises is God is doing something in our generation. And he's moving our whole generation into the fullness of what God wants to do. But I'm telling you this, before God can move a generation into a generational promise, he looks for a Joshua to lead the people there. And I want to highlight this in verse 6 when he says, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to who? Does he say to give to you? Does he say, Joshua, lead the people. I have an amazing inheritance for you, Joshua, and you're going to lead all the people, but it's your inheritance. No, he's saying to Joshua, I'm calling you to rise up and take responsibility for your generation and lead them into the fullness of the promises that I am giving to them. And there's a call of God on a generation, and I believe it's on all of us, to say we will rise up and be those Joshuas to go, we're taking responsibility for our generation. We're going to step out and we're going to lead our generation into those generational promises that God wants to give to them. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 18. How are you guys doing? You guys are amazing, so hungry, I love it. Joshua chapter 18, verse 3. And I'll start in verse 1, actually. So real quick, just so you know, at uh, chapter 18, they've been going to battle. They've crossed over, and they've been thundering and just doing business with the enemy, driving the enemy out to take possession of the land. But I, So what, this verse that I'm about to read to you is after many battles, okay? After many battles. Uh, Joshua chapter 18, verses 1 through, C, through 3, it says, The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control. I hope you heard that. The country was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not received their inheritance. So verse 3, so Joshua said to the Israelites, how long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land 
that the Lord, the God of the ancestors, has given you. And I want to say this, is you can sometimes be in the land, you can even sometimes have won the victories of the land and still not taken possession of the inheritance that God wants to give you. And I love this urgency in Joshua's voice as they've been winning battles, and they're in the land, and sometimes we become content by being in the land. And Joshua's saying, it's great that we've won battles, it's great that we're here, but how long are you going to wait to take possession? And I feel like there's that urgency in the air, and I feel like it's an invitation to all of us. I feel as though God is saying to us tonight, there are some battles that we're winning. There are some battles we still need to win. But how long are you going to wait to move in and take possession of that land? Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, or sorry, 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 1. I'm setting the table up, and in a few minutes, we're going to go to battle. Does that sound good? Can you guys hang in there with me for a few more minutes? And then we're going to really go after some territory together that I think the Lord has for us as a room specifically to begin to move forward together. And that's the rhythms of Monday nights. I'm sure if you've been here, you've seen this. But we really move, try to move between inspiration and practical training. Inspiration and practical training. Why are we doing that? Because we're moving forward together. And that's the invitation tonight is we're saying don't sit on the sidelines. Move forward with us. Let's move forward as a family into the promises of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says this. Actually, I'll start in verse 18. It says, but as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no. But in him, it has always been yes. Everyone say yes. yes. Verse 20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. I want to tell you that every promise over your life is sure because those promises come from Jesus Christ. They are yes and amen, every promise. We are going after the promises of God. So I want to give you some principles here. Can you guys stay with me as we go? The theme of the book of Joshua is this. It's entering, claiming, and possessing the promises of God. And that's really significant, and I want to show you why. Turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to read verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. It says, all these people, this is the great hall of faith, right? It's all these heroes of the faith and all the exploits that they did and accomplished. But verse 13 says this. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Why am I reading that to you? Listen real quick. Don't miss this. This is key. Because sometimes God has assignments on people's lives that they are, in a sense, they are seeing what's coming, and I liken them unto a link in the chain of faith through history. Does that make sense? In other words, God is saying, remember Abram, when he received the promise about the land. Remember, God first spoke of the land of Canaan to Abram before he was Abraham. I want you to know that's five to 600 years before they arrive in Canaan. And so he's a link in the chain. God is showing him the future. And he's saying, my assignment to you is to believe and obey. Believe and obey. Some people carry assignments on the earth where their assignment is to believe and obey. But they're seeing what is to come. And their job is to keep that promise alive. Their job is to pray that promise in. Their job is to contend and to carry that narrative on earth. But it's a different generation's job to possess the promise. And then when Joshua, have you ever thought about why Joshua, why that generation? Don't you think they stood at the river? Don't you think that around the dinner table for hundreds of years they would talk about this land, the land flowing with milk and honey, and they're having the revelation. Come on, are you guys tracking with me right now? It's the young generation that has the realization we get to receive the fulfillment of the promises that our mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers for generations have prophesied to us. Why do we get to be the ones to go in? But I'm telling you that as a generation, Gen Z, there are so many promises that are generational that will come to fulfillment in our generation. I believe that. And I believe that God is saying to you, you are on the mouth of that Jordan River and you you're going to get to be the ones to lead your generation into fulfillment. Canaan represents God's promised inheritance given to the believer and claimed by faith. Don't miss this next statement, what I'm about to say. How are we doing? The victorious Christian life, 
The victorious Christian life is a life of battles and blessings. And I know so many people, they want the blessing, but they are not excited about the battle part. And what I want to tell you is that God is showing us through the book of Joshua, this is how the kingdom works. The victorious, joy-filled, spirit-filled life is one of battles and blessings. We have to say yes to both of those. There are individual promises, corporate promises, and generational promises. I hit that. And then this is a repeat. I said this, but too many Christians live in between in their spiritual lives between Egypt and Canaan, free from the death and bondage of Egypt, yet not living in the fullness of God's victory, rest, and inheritance. So my goal tonight is this, is to train and equip us as a family to go, how can we move forward together into fulfillment? We want to begin to take territory in our lives. Everyone say, it's time to take territory. So I'm going to give you a few principles here that are going to help us on how you practically take territory. Here you go. Joshua 4.13. And you don't have to go there. I'll just read it to you, okay, for time. But Joshua 4.13, it says, About 40,000 armed for battle crossed over before the Lord to the plains of Jericho for war. Did you hear that? For war. Everyone say war. war. Crossing over the river of Jordan in itself was an act of war against the enemy. Did you guys hear that? Crossing over was in itself an act of war. I want you to think about this. The nations are watching them cross over. Do you think it was hidden from them, a few million people? The river stops flowing. You think that's not? No, the Bible tells us that all the neighboring nations knew what was going on. They heard about what God was doing. But the crossing over was in itself the nation. It was an act saying, we are coming to take possession of that land. I want you to know that when you cross over, I'm connecting the dots for you. Listen, don't miss this. When you set your heart to cross over in obedience to Jesus, that in itself is an act of war against the enemy. You are declaring through your life, I am coming to take that territory back from you because it's God's promised inheritance for me. Joshua 4.18 says this, And the priests came up out of the river carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord. We always talk about the crossing over like the miracle, but I want to talk about the other side of the miracle. It says, no sooner had they come up out of that, that they set their feet on dry ground, then the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. What does that mean? Can I tell you what that means? The Jordan River at flood stage cut off their retreat. There was no retreat. Retreat was not an option. There was no going back and there was no backup plan. I want to invite you guys into this, that it's time for us to commit ourselves to a life of taking territory with no backup plans. When you tell the Lord, I'm setting my heart to cross over, and the Lord goes, I'm going to make a way, I'm going to make a miracle, there's an invitation to cross over, and you cross over. Number one, you in doing that, you may not know it, you're like, this is an amazing Monday night, but you don't know it, but your whole life is going, I declare war, I declare war on the enemy. Can I get an amen? Amen. Some of you wake up and you go, man, I'm having a bad day. Why am I having a bad day? Well, you don't know it, but your whole life is declaring war. And the enemy goes, man, I'm going to battle against you. So I'm, I'm bringing you into that clarity tonight to go, man, God is inviting me into this spiritual battle to take territory. All right, so I'm going to give you some principles. Here we go. That will help us. Am I going too fast, you guys? Okay, number one is this, to receive or possess the fullness of those promises individually and collectively requires warfare. There is no other way. I'm declaring a spiritual truth to you. There is no way to possess the fullness of the promises of God in your life without a life of taking territory, which is a life of spiritual warfare. Matthew uh, 11, verse 12 says this, and from the time of John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. There's spiritual violence to taking territory in the heavenlies. Number two, we are born into spiritual battle, spiritual warfare, a collision of two kingdoms the moment that we're born into this world. From the start of your life, there is battle over your soul. And when you're born again, that battle does not cease, but it shifts. To The enemy wants to keep you from being fruitful. He's doing everything he can to keep you from crossing over. Would you, uh, Grace, do me a favor. Let's go to that first passage up on the screen for me. Yes. So Ephesians, I'm just going to pour through some scriptures here. Ephesians chapter 6 says this. You guys doing well? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 
Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so when the day of battle comes, I'm sorry, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then. I want you to know that in a New Testament context, our battle is not with people. We're not taking practical territory, but we're taking spiritual territory. But I want you to know that taking spiritual territory is as violent as we see in the Old Testament. And there's a setting of your heart, a setting of your mind, a setting of your spirit to live your life in that manner. Okay, the next one for me, James 4. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It is a biblical command for you to resist the enemy. 1 Peter 5.8, be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 2 Corinthians 10, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. How are we doing? Okay, 1 Timothy. You guys getting the theme? (laughs) Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, so when we say yes, we're saying yes to a life of spiritual battle. Okay, number three principle I want to give you is this. There is great debate within the church as to whether this level of effort is required to receive the promises of God. Many will ask and say, does it really take all of this? Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, which I read in a minute ago, but I'm going to repeat it, says this. God says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. And I think a lot of people tap into that phrase that God will give me. And there's this subtle lie from the enemy that goes, I don't need to fight because God will give me the promise. But the book of Joshua shows us that as God goes, I'm giving you the promise, but I'm still commanding you to go put your foot there. And I want to ask you the question, how violent do you think it was for them to go walk up to Jericho and go, we're putting our feet on this ground. God is going to give us this territory. I wrote this little word of encouragement to myself, so I'll read it to you. God promises to give us every place where we set our foot, and yet we must fight to set our foot there. Even if it was not a fight to get our feet to those spiritual places we intend to receive as a gift of grace, certainly the act of placing our feet there is a declaration of war to the enemy. It is an eviction notice to the enemy, notifying him that his day is done, for the kingdom has arrived and intends to move in and hold that ground for the glory of God. You may not realize it, but your very existence on earth is a declaration of war against the enemy from God. Derek was preaching a number of weeks ago, and it was a powerful message on the courageous heart, and he said this line. I just felt it reverberated when he said it. He goes, you need to know why you're on earth. Do you know why you're on earth? If you don't know, you have to know why you're on earth. And I want to tell you that one key ingredient of why you're on the earth is to take territory for God. And you cannot resign yourself from that. You can't say that's someone else's job. That's someone else's gift set. I want you to know the moment in your mind you retire from taking territory from the enemy is the moment he's taken all your territory. You have to set your mind to go all the days of my life. I will follow in the work of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said the reason he came to earth was to destroy the work of the devil. And then in John 17, when he prays for all the disciples who will come, he goes, I'm sending them out the same way I was sent here. You are sent in the very image of Jesus to destroy the work of the enemy. All right, here's another one. To be a Christian, a real true Christian, is to enjoy the battle of taking back territory. The truth is, and I'm not picking on anyone here, I'm just saying for my own life, that sometimes when you bring up this subject, there's like a, there's a drop in the air. There's like a, it's like I just said to everyone, we're going to go exercise. And, and like, oh, I, was, I was more pumped about ice cream, but I guess maybe I can slip out the back of the room and no one will know. 
Don't raise your hand, but has anyone ever had that drop in your spirit where you're like, I guess some spiritual battle is going to be necessary right now? So it's like this necessary evil that we accept as part of our life. But if you're anything like me, we're looking for all the ways we can avoid spiritual battle because we'd rather do it any other way. And I want to say as true believers, look forward to the battle. I'm going to give you a couple of quotes. C.T. Studd, who was a famous missionary from England, and he was a missionary to Africa, an epic story. We don't have time. I could spend the whole hour on him. He wrote this, um, uh, it was, a, I guess, kind of a poem, and it had two names. Uh, one name was called The Chocolate Soldier. How many of you love that? It's an epic name. And the other name he went uh, by with it was uh, Heroism, the Lost Court of Christianity. And he has this line in it that I love. It just has been burned on my soul, and I want to share it with you because there's an invitation for us to join in the joy of the battle of taking territory. C.T. Studd said this, War gives believers their liberty and sends them like children bounding out of school to obtain their heart's desire or perish in the attempt. Battle is the soldier's vital breath. John Wimber, an amazing man of God, a movement leader right here in Southern California, was quoted as saying this, the Christian church is an army, not an audience. I want to ask, are we signed up for all that it will take to take the promises of God? Are we looking to be spectators on the sideline, hoping that the army will go before us and do the work, and then we get to come in and take possession? Are we saying, here am I, send me, put me in, put me at the very front row, God, I'm ready to take that territory. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, had this incredible line. He wrote this, but he would speak to his um, Salvation Army. He called them officers, and he would have these yearly addresses where he would exhort and commend them. But he was quoted as saying this, Oh, officers, at all risks and consequences, you must fight for God and the salvation of souls. And in that exhortation, he titled this, he, had, he, uh, he would tell his officers, there are seven spirits that you have to have. And that one is an excerpt from one he would call the spirit of holy warfare. And I felt the invitation for us tonight is all as believers is to say yes to having that heart of holy warfare. Will we sign up for that aspect of the Christian life? Will we sign up with joy to say, Jesus, we're not only ready to cross over, but we're ready for our retreat to be cut off. We're ready to stare down Jericho and all the other cities that need to be taken in so that we can possess the fullness of the promises of God. How are we doing out there? All right, here we go. Okay, so I want to move into activation. We're just going to pray here for about 10 minutes. Does that sound good? I want everyone to stand up. And what we're going to do is um, we have two aspects of tonight's application that I want to do. But before we do this, I want to just give an invitation. And in a moment, I'm just going to ask if, you're, if, you, if you identify with these things that I'm about to share, I want you to flood the front, okay? And I really believe that tonight is not about a message. Tonight's about a breakthrough. Tonight's about a breakthrough. And there's an invitation for all of us who are hungering for that breakthrough to cross over and engage in that battle. Part of what we're going to do in a moment is as they crossed over, I want to remind you in the book of Jericho, or I'm sorry, in the book of Joshua, they confronted that city of Jericho. And city by city, they began to take territory. And tonight, we're going to practically take territory together as a family. I've got some categories that we're going to rumble on. But before we do that, I want to say this. If you're in the room and you know that you know that you are called to be a leader in your life, I want you to come and flood the front right now. Even if you would say, I don't know what that looks Yeah, just come on down right now. Even if you, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know exactly how that's going to be lived out. You don't know all the details. I want you to flood the front right now. Press all the way up to the front because there's going to be more. Come on up. Come on up. All the way up to the very front. Yeah, push up. Okay, if you're in the room, listen. If you're in the room and you know that your life has been under spiritual warfare, maybe you've not been able to explain it. I think there are some of you in the room that you've been under so much spiritual warfare, you don't even talk about it. You keep it to yourself. You, don't, you can't explain it. Some of you are mystified by the warfare because you're like, why am I under such intense warfare? The answer is because you're a Joshua. And the enemy has greater faith about who you are than you do have faith for who you are. And the enemy's not confused about who you are. The enemy knows if you get activated and you get turned loose, you have one mission. It's to destroy him. And so he's pounding on you. If tonight, if you feel like there's unexplainable warfare in your life, 
How do you characterize warfare? Many ways, but I'll give you a couple. Number one, if you just have an overriding sense of confusion on your life and you cannot think straight, I want you to raise your hand right now. That's warfare. If you live in a cycle of discouragement and self-hatred where you just don't see how you're valuable and you don't see how you have value and purpose, raise your hand. That's warfare. So there's these expressions of warfare, and tonight we're going to break through this. I, it seems like everyone's out, so we're just going to pray. Does that sound good? Okay, so we're going to pray together. Now listen, this is an activation moment. This is not a pondering moment. We just crossed over. Did you guys get that? So you know, so we're going to thunder in prayer and I believe tonight we're practically taking territory spiritually in every person's life. So as we pray, we're going to pray in a punch through prayer way. That means we're going to lift our voice and there's faith in what we're praying. I'm going to challenge you tonight to match my cadence and to match my intensity. I'm going to lead you into that battle. This is what it looks like. Don't do this tonight and go home and return to your old life. Keep living this way. I'm showing you what battle really looks like. How do you take territory? I'm showing you how to take territory tonight. So we're going to thunder and pray. You're going to repeat after me. Here we go. The first city, so to speak, or territory that I want to take is the territory of compromise. And when you, listen, when you read the book of Joshua, there is this pattern, and they call it the Canaanite culture. And the Canaanite culture was this. They would press in and battle for 90% victory, and then they always made peace with that last 10%. And I want to ask you tonight, are you satisfied with 90% breakthrough? Are you satisfied with marrying into that 10% compromise? Are you satisfied just to go, look, it was just, you know, it's a little bit of pornography, but it's way better than where I was. It's a little bit of drugs and alcohol, but it's better than where I was. It was just a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Are you, or are we saying, no, we're going all the way? So I want us to pray this with me. We're going to say yes to crossing over together. Just repeat after me. As we pray, match my intensity. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. That was good. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. And back row, I want you to come in hot. If you're back there but you couldn't get up front, you just thunder from the back. Okay, amen. Here we go. Everyone repeat after me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus Christ. Number two category that we're taking this second territory is this. It's unbelief that God can and wants to partner with you in this way. And the truth is there's some of you in the room that you're saying, man, He's a Joshua, she's a Joshua, they're a Joshua, but how can I be a Joshua? And I'm telling you that tonight, if you're feeling like the least qualified person, you're probably the greatest Joshua in the room. So it doesn't matter how you feel, this is a by faith. Everyone pray this with me. In Jesus' name. Okay, number three is this. We're going to crush the territory of fear in your life. And here's what the Lord said. It's fear of being disqualified. Fear if I step out in faith, God won't meet me. Fear of what God will ask me to do or dread over what God will ask me to give up. I want to tell you, you cannot take the promised land if you're hiding from the promised land. So we've got to step out and step forward. Here we go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name I repent. For all, fear. For all fear, I say yes, I say yes. To, running to running at the enemy in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Guys are crushing it right now. Come on. Do you, you got strength for a couple more? 
Okay, here we go. Number four, territory. Remember, these are territories that we're taking. They're likened unto cities, just like Jericho is a city. And God goes, if you want the whole land, you got to start here. And you can't go to the second until you take the first. So we're taking these categories of our life city by city, territory by territory, okay? So this fifth territory we've got to take is a territory of defeat. And it's this. It's every time I take this hill, I have a setback. Many of you have stepped out before and then you experience setbacks. And so the enemy is trying to condition you to stop trying. The enemy is begging you to just lay down on the job and just go, you're never going to break through. You're never going to see the fulfillment of the promises. And he's saying things like, just let God do it. Just let God do it. And God is saying, I am going to do it, but you got to cross over and go. <laughs> Say this with me. Pray this with me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I crush. I crush. Passivity in my life. Okay, last territory that we're taking, and then we're going to go after some promises that God is telling us that we get to move into, okay? You guys doing good? Okay, you guys are crushing it, man. You're on fire. Here we go. Last territory we're going to take for tonight is this, is regret and sorrow. And it says this, my past mistakes make it more difficult for me. Some of you are saying, I wish I had grown up different. I wish I had different gifts. I wish I had a family like that. So it's all these reasons why we cannot be the Joshua. And for many of us, that's our mistakes in the past, and we're feeling that we're disqualified. I believe there's at least one person in the room, probably more than that, that you know that you know you're a Joshua, but when you look at yourself in the mirror, you go, how can I say I'm a Joshua? You're almost afraid to say it out loud because you feel so much guilt and condemnation. And the Lord's saying tonight, you got to shred that because that's like a territory in your life that's placed there by the enemy to keep you from moving into the fullness of that. Let's do it together. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I repent. I break the power of condemnation off my life. Okay, you guys are crushing. Here we go. We're going to do four promises that God has for us as a generation. We're going to thunder on these just for a few minutes. Are you guys good? Yeah. So these are likened unto the promises. These are the promises. I believe these are literal, actual promises that God is saying to every one of you individually. He's saying to your families. He's saying to our generation, this is yours, and we're going to agree on these tonight. In other words, by faith tonight, we're taking possession of these promises. You guys tracking with me? So the number one is this. The Lord's saying that available to us is radical revival and awakening in our generation. How many of you are saying, I want to see radical revival? And okay. Pray this with me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. We, are we are pulling down the promise of radical revival, the of radical revival. and awakening. In our, generation. in our generation. Now listen, here's my policy. When you say yes to a promise over your generation, you have to be willing to be the solution to that prayer. So that's part of the Joshua mode, is Joshua goes, I'll take responsibility. So I want you to do this for 20 seconds out loud. You're going to pray your own prayer. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to guide you through this. I want you to call out that there would be a historic outpouring of revival and awakening. I want you to pray in your own words, and I want you to pray with the same intensity we've been praying for. We're just going to go 20 seconds or so. One, two, three, go. God, we just ask you to unleash that revival, that awakening. Okay, pause. So good. Yes. Come on, so good. Okay, second promise we're going to pull down is this. Is the Lord saying available to us, and I really believe this is real for Southern California, but it can be real from wherever you're from, is that a real Jesus movement is coming out of the ground here. 
And I want to declare this, the gospel is still the gospel and it's powerful to save and the gospel is for my generation now. And so we're saying yes to the gospel. We're saying yes, every one of us to being the evangelist that our generation needs. I want you to go 20 or 30 seconds on that. And I'm challenging you to say the words, I am an evangelist to my generation. And you might say, I don't have that gift. God will work that out. We're saying yes to the responsibility. There's a thing called power. God can just come on you and wake up one day and you go, hey, I couldn't do that yesterday and I can today. Day. So let's just go. 20 or 30 seconds. Everyone says to me, I say yes, I say yes. To, being to being the evangelist my generation needs. My generation needs. I, say yes I say yes to being marked by the gospel, by the gospel. In, its fullness. in its fullness. Okay, number three is this. We're pulling this down. Here we go is tangible presence in our generation, in our life, and in our home. And I want to say this, joy and fulfillment. And this is the key. This is the beauty of this Old Testament picture that we've learned about tonight. Jesus actually is the greatest Joshua. He leads us into our victory. I want you to know that Jesus is our greatest fulfillment. He actually is the greatest promised land. And I want you to know that Jesus is the angel of the Lord that Joshua encounters in chapter 5 when he goes, are you with us or against us? And the angel says, neither. And then he goes, okay. And then if you read that passage, the angel goes, listen, they've crossed over at that point. Don't miss this. They've crossed over, and he's looking at Jericho when he has this angelic encounter, Joshua. And the scholars tell us it's the pre-incarnate Christ. He's speaking to Jesus. So Jesus is the greatest Joshua. Jesus is the greatest promised land. And Jesus is the commander of the Lord's army who leads you into victory. So when I say tonight we're going after fullness, really Jesus is that fullness that we are going after. And I love in that encounter when he says neither, the angel says this. He goes, I'm here now. We can go take Jericho. And I love that line because to me that means, hey, when you cross the Jordan, good for you. I wasn't there yet, but I'm here now. It's time to go. And I really believe there's something for our generation that Jesus is saying, I'm here now. It's time to go. So let's respond to the Lord with this. Say this with me. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name I, declare, I declare Jesus is my greatest promised land. Jesus is my greatest promised land. Jesus is the greatest Joshua. And Jesus always leads us to victory. And Jesus always leads us to victory. This is the last one we're going to go after tonight, and we can do this if the worship team wants to make their way up. We're going to thunder on this one. I felt specifically to go after this tonight is I believe that there's a promise of, um, of, of healing for our generation. Like literally, I believe that Jesus is coming to move in power. And I'm not talking about a lucky star moment where you go, it was a bolt of lightning and it never happened again. I believe that Jesus wants to abide in us in a way where power is exhibited in, an, in just, it's part of our daily life. Everywhere you go, activated in power. Everywhere you go, activated in healing. Everywhere you go, activated in deliverance. I'm telling you, when you look at our generation, there will be no other way but power. And we need to see the power of Jesus Christ being unleashed to our generation. And I felt tonight that God wanted us to thunder on healing. That healing would be... So here's what we're going to do. If you're in the room and you are in need of physical healing, it can be a physical healing, it can be maybe you've got um, some sort of just anything that you need healing for, I want you to raise your hand really, really high. Okay, keep it up really high. Keep it up really high. All of those around those people, I want you to circle around them and lay hands on them. Yep, do it quick, do it quick. We're going to take this territory. And what I want you to do is I want you for 30 seconds just to begin that the power of God would break out on that person you're laying hands on and that there would be a miracle healing right now. I want you just to begin to pray. Just go for it. Just pray for them. God, we just pray for every person in the room whose arm is up. Lord, you know every need, Father. We ask for power to be released in the room. Jesus, we honor you. We elevate you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the healer. You always were the healer. You still are the healer. You always will be the healer. We elevate you, Jesus. We pray that you would touch every person tonight. God, we pray for power to come down on every person. Pray every...
I want everyone to pray this with me. Just repeat after me with this. In Jesus' name, we declare healing. We'll mark this generation. We declare that Jesus the healer is on the scene. He can heal all diseases, sickness. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Okay, I want to do this. Is Do we have that slide that we can put up? This is my closing deal for tonight, okay? And this is part of taking territory. So practically, how do you take territory? It starts with prayer, thundering in prayer like this. But oftentimes, and I'll just say this for me, every breakthrough I've ever had, there was always a radical action step. Does that, did you guys hear what I just said? In other words, you couldn't stand in the desert and go, it's going to be ours. The Lord goes, no, you got to cross over and do something. And so this is a radical action step. I feel like the Lord has called our whole community into our circuit rider uh, missions communities. We are going to do a three-day push, prayer push for healing. When I say healing, I'm saying literally that every single person in this room would be marked with healing, that your hands would be marked for healing, that everywhere you go, if you're a student, when you go to school, healing the sick. If you're a college student, when you go to school, healing the sick. If you're in the marketplace, you're healing the sick. Power is breaking out in your marketplace. If you're a mom in the room, it's power is breaking out in your home. If you're a dad, it's whatever sphere of life you're called to, that you're operating in power. So I'm going to pray for you. I want every hand up. If you're longing to be marked with power in the gospel, I want you to raise your hands. Jesus, we just release right now power all across the room. I pray power to heal would be released all across the room. We ask you to touch every hand, touch every heart in Jesus' name. We declare that there is nothing too difficult for you. I pray every sickness, autoimmune diseases would be, would literally bow at the feet of Jesus. Father, we pray every mental um, sickness or illness or disorder that's plaguing our generation. Right now, God, you would release authority. I pray authority to heal, power to heal would mark this room in Jesus' name. Not one person left out. We say yes in Jesus' name. So here's my invitation to you is this. If you want to join us, in this three-day prayer push, this is what it's going to look like. It's really simple. Okay, you can scan this QR code. And what we're going to do is starting tonight, for the next three days, three times a day, we're going to send out simple prayer notes. These will be really, really simple prayer notes. Think three or four lines like we did tonight. And you can just pray those as you go through your day. Just be in a spirit of agreement, okay? Number two is we'll do that three times a day, morning, noon, and night. So we're just going to have unified, simple, childlike prayers of faith for the next three days. Number two is this. Every Thursday night, we have the greenhouse prayer room. And so we are going to culminate the three-day push on Thursday night at the greenhouse. We're going to have a healing service. And if you're available and you want, I'm inviting you, come back to the greenhouse. What time, Chase? 6.30 on Thursday night in this room and it's going to be a healing service and what we're going to do is after three days of contending together for a breakthrough in power we're going to have a healing service I'm encouraging you bring your sick if you know anyone who's sick you bring them if you're sick you bring them and we're believing that that night everybody is healed we're going to have our whole community here we'll have our elders our leaders here we're going to have anointing oil the whole thing and we're going to go as a community as a family that's all of you we're going specifically after a breakthrough of healing in our generation this is your inheritance so we are inviting you into that so if you want to join scan that you'll get those prayer notes every day and you can rumble with us we'll see you thursday night let me just pray father we thank you for what you've done we thank you that all your promises are yes and amen god we thank you that you are faithful to fulfill all your promises jesus we're saying yes we want to respond to you with faith we want to surge forward in our life in jesus name we pray every territory that was taken tonight, God, you would fortify those areas in our life. We pray the chains of compromise would be shattered in Jesus' name. I pray for power encounters, love encounters all across the room. God, I pray everyone would leave tonight marked and baptized in a holy confidence that your hand is on their life as a leader to their generation. celebrate in faith that Jesus is going to move in healing and in power, right? Yes. Are you guys ready? We're going to sing Where Are the Chains. I think we did it last week too, but
who cares? Because we truly believe that Jesus is gonna break chains off of our generation, right? Who's believing that he's gonna break chains off your high school and your universities? Yes, off your life, off your family. Let's do it, you guys ready?
that message, I feel like we got to have a Jericho shout to Jesus as a statement tonight to end the night that there would just be a roar from this place just saying we're giving our yes to declare war on the enemy for our generation so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna count to three and then we gotta just shout jesus i mean as loud as we can letting the enemy know that he can't have our generation you guys ready you guys got it in you all right here we go get ready one two one two three come on lift it up
deal, guys. Here's what the joy of this message is, is that the same intensity and belief and faith that's present here can be present when you're driving your car, when you're praying in the morning, when you're having time with the Lord. How many of you would say tonight that you tangibly felt freedom like on your, on your life? So here's the deal. God will set you free in a moment through the gift of repentance. But here's the deal. How many of you know that when you get back home tomorrow when you wake up, enemy comes knocking on your door? Here's the deal. You don't have to answer. So the joy is that you keep contending, you keep believing. So in the same way Matt led us tonight in those prayers and those declarations, when the temptation comes to retreat, all you got to say is the waters, they're behind me. I can't, I can't go anywhere. I only have room to move forward. And we keep moving forward. We keep charging forward. And that freedom becomes the lifestyle we live, not just a moment we had on a Monday night, but that we begin to take ground and possess the land. Everybody say, possess the land. So I'm going to pray, close this out, and then we'll see you Thursday night. I want you to come. Bring, if you have friends who need healing, bring them Thursday night. Gather your friends, put on your social media. Let's pack this place out with people who need a breakthrough and a miracle. Let's lay hands on them and see the sick recover. So Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for every breakthrough. We ask Holy Spirit that you would seal up every breakthrough tonight in the name of Jesus. And we ask that by faith, we would possess the land. We would possess the promises of God over our generation. We receive and accept the charge that Matt gave us tonight by the Spirit. There is no retreating. We are moving forward in Jesus' name. And somebody said, amen, amen. We'll see you Thursday night. If you can't make it, we'll see you next Monday night. Have an awesome week.